तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः स्वयं श्री चैतन्य मनोपेष्ट स्थापित वेन भूत स्वयं रूप कलाम ददाती सतांशिक हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगत श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद गिवट So the basic question is what happens to the soul after the death this is the question and all of us face this kind of question when our nearest and dearest dies uh, and this question sometime or other it always comes to now how many have you read a garud quran or are you familiar with garud quran and familiar the same way the basic extract and that's where like i said i with his blessing i am attempting to uh, put some sort of an extract into it so the garud purana as you know is one of the 18 mahapuranas is one of the 18 mahapuranas and it's a part of vishnu literature corpus it's divided into two parts uh, this garud purana is divided into two parts namely purva kanda which is 90% of the garud puran which basically deals with the life and living and sort of those things and the other part is called uttarakhand which is 10% which is known as a preta khand or preta kalp which is primarily deals with the rituals associated with the death and cremations so the garud puran as we said is one of the vishnu puranas it is a conversation between lord vishnu and uh, garud the king of birds the puran was told by lord vishnu to garuda then garuda told it to kashyapuni and then who then revealed it to maharshi vyas ved vyas so this puran the sutra can deal specific issues of hindu philosophy connected with the death funeral rites and reincarnation so the idea that the soul returns in another body after the death of present body has fascinated the people throughout the history 
I mean, in all cultures, uh, these different cultures all over the world, they are just concerned in, in whether it's ancient or a modern culture. They are all questioning whether what really happens to the life, uh, what happens to uh, in modern life, what happens to the soul after the death. Uh, basically, generally they know as reincarnation, as an integral part of their views. So the basic questions that comes out from this Garu Purani, what is death? Is there a life after death? Is the death pain? What happens after death? How does rebirth happen? And where do we go after death? Now, it's a very detailed subject, but what we are going here is uh, going to sort of a glimpse, a uh, summary of what's really involved in this Garu Purana Uttarakhand. Because uh, it, it's like Janmamrityu Jaraga, the Piditam Karma Bandhani. Everybody is concerned that, you know, due to Karma Bandhans, due to, and because of Janmamrityu and Jaraga, the, the age and disease and the old age, we are all concerned. So, this kind of questions related to most feared event that ends our life always fill our mind, especially when any of our near and dear ones die. This is speaking more from a material point of view also. I mean, spiritual world, you at least know actually what, why we are doing, what is the purpose of our spiritual development. So we feel that suddenly the relationship has broken abruptly when somebody dies and wish that there could be a connection. Could there be a connection again? Is this the quest, our journey to find answers to the above questions? That's where the questions begin. When somebody nearest and dearest die, we start worrying what's really going to happen. So Bhagavad Gita really answers, I mean, so what happens after death? Death is actually a very interesting process. Uh, Bhagavad Gita chapter 2, which we have studied very vigorously, uh, 2.13 says, Dehi no asmin yatha dehe kumaram yovanam jara our embodied soul continuously passes in this body from a boyhood to youth to an old age and the soul similarly passes into another body after death. So as far as we are concerned, as I am, at least Gita gives us a clear answer what happens to the soul. It says that as the soul is eternal, when it leaves one body, it is transmitted, transmigrating to the another body, either material or spiritual, depending on our karmas and depending on what we have gone through. So that's what we'll look quickly in the detail. Now further it is stated in Bhagavad Gita, like uh, 15, 8, chapter 15. Uh, it says, Sariram yadavapnoti yachapi utkramati rahatvaitani sampati so what happens with the soul when the soul goes from one body to another? It says it offers the mechanism for reincarnation. Just as the air carries aroma, the soul carries the different conceptions of life from one body to another. And thus it takes one kind of body and quits to take another. So I mean, answers are very clear in Gita on a very first page. Now we are trying to look this more from a philosophical point of view as, as well, because you have you are living in a material world where people ask questions and just giving these two slokas doesn't really answer everything. So here the living entity is described as Ishvara in the second sloka. We say yet the therapy Utkamati Ishvara. Ishwara. Here the living entity is described as Ishwara, the controller of his own body. If he likes, he can change his body to a higher grade. And if he likes, he can move to a lower class. There is a minute independence is there. Uh, that the change his body undergoes depends upon him. At the time of death, the consciousness he created will carry him on the next type of body. I mean, very famous example in Srimad Bhagavad is the birth Maharaj, right? The end, uh, the year uh, that he's taking care and ultimately he's 
uh, spoon is very well known, so I won't repeat it here. But, uh, if he has made this consciousness like that, Prabhupada says the consciousness is like that of a cat or a dog. He's sure to change cats or dogs body. And if he has fixed his consciousness on godly qualities, he will change into the form of a divine god. And if he is in a Krishna consciousness, of course he will be transformed to Krishna rule in the spiritual world and will associate with Krishna. We are looking now more both from material point of view as well as spiritual point of view. But in summary it says, it, it, we have a mind with independence. I mean, this mind with independence uh, is what we are trying to establish. The disconnection of the earth's solar chakra. So now exactly what happens. Approximately four to five hours before death, the earth's solar chakra situated below the feet gets detached and symbolizing the disconnection from the earth plane. A few hours before an individual dies, their feet turns the cold. And when the actual time to depart arrives, it is said that Yamaduta, the god of death, Yama, uh, appears to guide the soul. I mean, basically, Yamaduta are working with Yamaraj. They, they are the one who is guiding the soul. So it is said there is the astral core, that the death severes the astral core which it connects the soul and the body. Because we have two bodies, we have gross body, we have soul body, and there is a soul. So the soul is connected to the body with the astral core. Once this cord is cut, the soul becomes free from the body and moves up and out of the body. What is that? Astral? Astral core. Astral code is like, uh, it's a non-physical realm of existence. Uh, it has to do with the stars. Hmm? COD code, a code. C-O-R-D code. The astral code, not code. Astral code is that? Yeah. If the soul is detached to the physical body, it occupied for this lifetime, it refuses to live and tries to get into the body and move out, move in it and stay in it. We may observe this as a very subtle or a slight movement on the face, hand or legs after the person dies. I mean, soul is not trying to test because it attacked to the body for so long time. It's now confused whether it's going out or staying in. And this is why you see the movement when the dead body is just, while it's there, it's just about moving here and there. So the soul is unable to accept that it is dead. It is mean the body is dead. Soul never dies. So he is unable to accept that the body is dead. There is still a feeling of being alive. And since the acid code has been severed, the soul cannot stay here and is pushed upwards out of the body. There is a pull from a magnetic pull to go up. So end of the physical body. At this stage, the soul hears many voices all at the same time. And there are the thoughts of all the individual present in the room. The soul is still in the room where the person's dead body is lying. The soul on its part talks to his loved ones like he always did. You can say it sounds like I am not dead, but alas, nobody hears him. Slowly and steadily the soul realizes that the body which is dead, there is no way back. And the state, at this stage, the soul is floating approximately, now this Veda is very clear, is approximately 12 feet or to the height of the ceiling in the same house or same rooms. 12 feet. 12 feet. Yeah. That's the Veda's calculations. Now, Veda in the sense of from the So, uh, is seeing and hearing, seeing, seeing and hearing everything happening around. Generally, the soul floats around the body till it is cremated. This is still discrimination. Until the cremation, the soul is still around. In fact, you say, so the next time you see a dead body being carried for cremation, be informed that the soul is also a part of the possession. It's hearing and witnessing everything and everyone. This, that's why it comes by in the philosophy of rituals and this and that. That will quickly go through. 
to the detachment from the body. Now how the soul travels. Once the cremation is complete, the soul is convinced that the main essence of its survival on the earth is lost. And the body it occupied for so many years has merged into a five elements, which is air, water, earth. So it has merged into this. That the soul experiences complete freedom. The boundaries it had while being in the body are gone. And now it can travel anywhere by mere thought as a subtle body. Now when you have subtle body, everybody goes, it's subtle body is like a breath. That's why we say the other was called breath of condemnation. Because God's soul still has no body, it's still a subtle body. So for seven days the soul moves to its places of interest. Like favorite joint, morning walk, gardens, offices. So be careful. <laughs> if the soul is possessive of his money, it will just stay near his couple. This is what Gadot Puran says. Take it for granted. It will stay around the cupboard. Or he, if he is a possessive of his children, it will just be in their room, clinging on them. By the seventh day, the soul says bye to his family and moves up further for the periphery of earth plane to cross over on the other side. And there are a couple, number of day wise, there are a couple uh, philosophical changes. I and mean, instead of seven, it said, it is said that there is a big tunnel, tunnel like the Vayu tunnel. It is a big tunnel which it crosses before reaching the astral plane. And hence it is said that first twelve days after the death is extremely crucial. First twelve days. We have to carry out the rituals correctly and pray and ask forgiveness from the soul. So that it does not carry the negative emotions like hurt, hatred, anger, and at least from the near and dear ones. So this is why our whole philosophical and spiritual development is you have a dead tie, you have the humbleness, you live a better life. All the rituals and prayers and positive energy act like a food for the soul. Which it helps it in its onward journey. At the end of the tunnel is a huge bright light signifying the entry into the astral world. Now on the 11th or 12th day, Hindu conduct the homas or prayer, uh, prayers and rituals through which the soul is united with its ancestors, close friends, relatives and guides. And during these days, uh, Maharaj has a good lecture on Pindadan, if you remember in 2013, your lecture in Carolina. And uh, where it said during these days, the Pindadan is done for the betterment of soul's journey, what we call Sadhagati. That's why we do Pindadan. And Pindadan becomes important at least in the Hindu rituals. That the Pindadan for first 10 days is formation of that little gross body for subtle body. Like on first day it forms the head, second day it forms the other organs. When we do the Pindadan for first 10 days. So, the Pindadan for first 10 days is the formation of so called a gross body which is a micro but a complete human-like form to carry the subtle body. And Pindan is also for passing to Pitrus. Uh, uh, it takes care of the Pitrus for three generations. Atma without gross body is hovering as what we call boot or a print. And uh, because it does not have a gross body, it's just the subtle body. Uh, and which is a temporary phenomenon. I mean, a lot of nitty gritty is about this. I think Maharaj's lecture is much better on Pindadan. I think it was given in 2013 on Carolina, in Carolina. So I'm not going into too much nitty gritty, otherwise, I uh, have half hour, I'm just doing major summaries on that refresh to the soul. So the soul, then, along with its guides, are taken on a long journey for a thorough life review of the life just completed on earth in the presence of a great karmic board. Chitragupta. Chitragupta is Amrata's so-called secretary, having a complete and the absolute account of each and every soul. So, it is here that in the pure light that the whole past is viewed. In other words, 
the way we have lived our life based on which the future of life is manifest. It is not that it just happens, Chitta go opens, then uh, works it out. There is a karmic thing. So there is no judge or there is no God here, that's the way Guru Puran says. The soul judges himself the way he judges others. This is more philosophical in nature. The, 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 the soul judges himself the way he judges others in his lifetime. He asks for the revenge for the people who troubled him in that way. And he experiences the guilt for all wrongdoings. He did to the people and asks for a self-punishment to learn that lesson. Since the soul is not bound by the body or false ego, the final judgment becomes the basis of his next lifetime. Because now soul, as you know, it, there is no false ego, there is no body, there is nothing left. So the soul is thinking on his own the way it exercises, how we live the world. And based on this, a complete life structure is created by the soul himself, which you can say is called the blueprint. Now, all the incidents to be faced, all problems to be faced, all challenges to be overcome are written in this agreement. This is the agreement on the way you live, the way you created your life. Now you are manifesting your next life. In fact, so chooses all minute details like the age, the person, the circumstances of all incidents to be experienced. Broadly speaking, it is Satkarma, the good souls headed toward the heaven, the Swargalok, Ganalok, Brahmalok, any of the seven lok on hierarchy of consciousness. The soul is honored and respected then quickly and sent to upper lok for thousands or lakhs of years. I mean, if you have done a lot of good deeds, like we say, you go to the Swargalok. But Swargalok is not ultimate. As we know, eventually when your credits are done, you are back to the Vritti work. So Swargalok is not the ultimate goal for the devotees or uh, the Krishna conscious people. So, what, but still it's saying that the Satkarma at least gives you a Swargalok or a better higher looks. And once the pious or good credits are used up in the prescribed years, the Satkarma ends up back on the earth. I'm trying to run out a little quickly, but... Uh, Take your time. <laughs> okay. So, what do we have? Sarkarmi, then Vikarma. Vikarma is a atheist, the criminals, the cruels. The, the souls that misbehave in uh, Mrityula, they, they are very much disrespected in Yamaloka. They are abused and punished on the way to hell. There are 27 types of hell described in the Quran. I'm just giving you a glimpse and general idea. I haven't studied in detail, but this is the abstract which all gives us more insight that when you have a chance, this is also one area to look into. So this 27 types of hell, depending on type and magnitude of sins committed. Yamato is pushing on the way to a long journey by walk. Now you have a subtle body with a microgross body. And most Vikarmish souls eventually end up, eventually end up as Arthama. But initially they have to go to the hell. And now going hell is a long journey. And the way Garudamara described it, the 345 days or 11 months to reach Yamalo. So to do that, 11 months, it's 11 lakh kilometers, so has to travel. And that's like 3,000, if you calculate 11 lakh kilometers, it's like 3,000 kilometers a day. So now these young dudes are pushing the body. Because you have given hell on the earth, now they are giving you hell in the air on the order of the young love. So, I mean, uh, they, there are figures which are exactly say 345 days it takes, 11 lakh kilometers and how the soul is being pushed by ambulance. This is only for the absurd and cruel people. The best one that we know, I mean we went to our theme of this Brihad Bhagavatam and uh, there we learned uh, mostly that you know, the whole finding, uh, the Narad Muni is finding the essence of uh, uh, 
is trying to find the essence of uh, you know the Krishna's mercy, the soul who has highest Krishna's mercy, and we travel to all that. We did that in detail. Similarly, uh, Gokuma, who is showing us the Golok and all that. So the Akarmis, Akarmis are the devotees, the sadhus, the gurus, the preachers. The best surrendered and the Krishna are picked up by Vishnu parcels. There's not too much. You still have to go through Yamlo because that's what Chitra Gupta is saying. But you are going on a quick route. So you, Vishnu parsed on a direct and quick flight by Puspak, they take you to a Golo. They have a TSF Priya Guru. Yeah. After Yamraj, even Yamraj honors you. Even Yamraj honors you by Dhanavat Pranam. That's the way Garud Puran says. So I mean, if you have had so much Dhanavat here and created that Krishna consciousness, you be sure that Yamraj will also pay the same respect and homage to you on your way. Because he knows you are the soul who is on your way to Golok or we can Golok, wherever the case may be. So, Akarmis, Akarmis are the devote, devotees and uh, the sadhus, and gurus, and all this. So, the Amaraj offers the Dandavat to these brave souls. It's probably an express ticket to Vaikuntha or to Golok, it's the Mahamantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram, Ram. So this this is the express ticket for Vaikuntha. Uh, and that's what the Prabhupada say, Prabhupada said that I'll be waiting for you when you arrive in the world. Because you have spent your life so much in Krishna consciousness. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of your Maharajan they will be all praying home to you. So it's a blueprint. This is the way we judge ourselves and guilt and ask for punishment. The amount of guilt in the soul decides the severity of punishment and level of suffering. Hence, forgiveness is very vital. We must forgive and seek forgiveness. Uh, Maharaj yesterday said in Krishna Prem, the Seva, the Dinta, the humbleness, all this, even that. This all ends up getting us prepared for our spiritual journey. And our journey, we're not looking all this, the envelope or the what happened to pray the body. I mean, pray the body is temporary for everywhere, for 10, 12 days. But eventually, you have an express flight. Anyway, I hope that's the way it works, but clear your thoughts and emotions as we carry them forward to the other side. Once this review is done and blueprint for the next life is formed, then there is a cooling period. The rebirth. I hope I have some time. To well, continue, continue. Yeah. Yeah. We, we are born depending on what we have asked for in our agreement. The cooling of period also depends on our urgency to evolve. We choose our parents and enter the mother's womb, either at the time of the formation or during the fourth or fifth month the last moment just before birth. So Sankarv is those who are coming back. All the ones who have finished their uh, journey in hell, uh, whatever they were, when they are reborn on the earth, I and mean, this is how it happens. And he says, there's a whole science that is described there in Garud Puran, which pretty much resembles medical science. What happens to the soul as it grows in the womb? I and mean, eventually the body. So the universe is so perfect, so beautifully designed that the time and place of birth constitutes our passport, which actually is a blueprint of this life. So suppose we have a lot left for our development. Still you don't have to worry. I mean, if you have done till 11th grade, in the next birth you go to the 12th grade. I mean, you don't start from the zero again. So it says the universe is so perfect and beautifully designed, which actually is a blueprint of our life. Most of us think that our stars are bad and we are unlucky, but in actuality, they just mirror your own agreement. It is not so much that our stars are bad or we are unlucky. It is the way we have lived our life and we have made our own horoscope and own stars. And uh, once we are reborn, for around 40 days, 
The baby remembers his past life and laughs and cries by itself without anyone forcing it to live. So when you see a newborn, the first 40 days, you see many times the baby is sitting and starts crying or he starts, you know, laughing or smiling, whatever you This is because it's trying to still remember his past birth. And the memory of past life is completely cut after these 40 days. And this we experience. Now this is not in all cases because we have a lot of reincarnation cases, but they are minute in overall population. The memory of past life is completely cut after this. We experience life as though it did not exist in the past. So once you are reborn, you don't know what you were, what your rebirth were. I mean, a lot of times these historians are making the jokes, you know, that it is good you don't know your past life. If somebody told you that the dog running outside was your uh, wife in the last birth, and if that was true, you'd be looking at the dog all day, you know, whether it ate or when it's running around. <laughs> so it's good you don't know all this. It's a past life. It's here that we are completely in the earth plane. And the contrast comes in the full effect. The contract comes in a full effect. We then blame God and people for our difficult situation and curse God for giving such a difficult life. So the next time before pointing out to the Divine, understand that our circumstances are just helping us complete and honor our own agreement. And we are so lucky, we have Guru Maharaj, we have Iskand, probably have done a better blueprint. That we are in such a mood that we are on a way to spiritual development. Otherwise there are so many people in material life, they are not fortunate. They are not fortunate to have this kind of so, what it's saying is, understand that our circumstances are just helping us complete and honor the agreement, which is fully and completely written by us. Whatever we have asked for and pre-decided is exactly what we got in this life. So probably we had done something better that we came to Islam. We met Prabhupada. I know I remember one incident uh, in Prabhupada uh, in Russia when they had uh, this meeting, the satsang, and one of these guys raises his hand and asks uh, Srila Prabhupada that, oh look, we have been eating meat so many lifetimes, my parents, my family, everybody is eating meat. How, 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 what happens to us? How many births we have to take to overcome this? You know what Prabhupada said? One minute. It only needs one minute. You don't have to just surrender to Krishna. Just surrender to Krishna and say, Sarva Dharman Paritajya Mamedam Saranam Brata Ahatvam Sarva Pape Vyo Moksha Isya So Prabhupada says, don't you read Gita? It's already said, it just takes you a minute, just surrender. If you can surrender, don't worry what you did in the past world. Don't worry what you have done. It's all gone. Anyway, this is the beauty of Gaudiya Sampradaya. The devotees, the gurus, Prabhupada and the Lord, everyone is prayed on an equal grounds. So, it is here that we are completely in the earth plane, uh, as we discussed. So, the friends, relatives, foes, parents, spouses, all have been selected by us. We are just paying our dues in this karmic relationship in a blueprint and comes in our lives based on this agreement. They are just playing their part and merely actors in the film written and produced and directed by us. So do the dead need healing and prayers and protection? Yes, the dead always needs a serious healing and prayers for a variety of reasons. The most important being to be free and not earth mouth. If we have prayers for our pitrals, our Bikrus and our own prayers also reaches them and it works. And the whole idea is to free them from being on route to earth mouth. And that is stuck in the earth plane and unbelievable to me, unable to be. There are many reasons for the soul to be earth bound, like unfinished business, excessive grief, the trauma and the death, and suddenly the fear of moving on to the astral plane. Pure plane, 
guilt and one of the most important being improper finishing and the last rites and rituals. So let us finish our material business and get more involved in devotion. The soul feels that it needs a little more time to wait and finish before moving on and this keeps them hovering on the earth plane. But the time is limited and very, very important that they cross over within 12 days on the astral plane of existence as the entry to the astral world closes after a few days. That's why we have 12 or 13 days as we have Hindu rituals and all this. Uh, so that one, earthman spirit live a very miserable existence as they are neither in their actual plane nor in a body to lead the earthly life. They may not be negative or harmful, but they are stuck and miserable. And hence healing and prayers are of utmost importance during this period so that the departed souls crosses over the designated extra plane. So prayers by the whole family is a very vital to help the dead cross over. The protection of the soul to help it reach its destination in the astral world is achieved through prayers. So please do not take death lightly. Now more than ever, most souls are stuck on the earth plane due to the lack of belief on the spiritual world. We are living in material world and you hardly find many people who are really interested in this spiritual progress or spiritual development. They all even neglect their own families. So this is Kali Kali. Uh, finally for someone who has lost near and dear, don't feel sad. We never die, we live on. Death does nothing, not end anything. It is just a little break till we meet again. As long as a person has a desire, and a certain level of consciousness, the rebirth is inevitable. So desires, from desires the body comes into being. Our desires and karmic score, some of consequences of all our actions, negative and positive, that's karmic score. So our desires and karmic score endow the body somewhere in the cosmic hierarchy of the bodies. Ultimately, I'm trying to shorten it up that ultimately for Krishna conscious devotees, Meet after the death of the famous address which Krishna gave us. We already have an address. Krishna already told in Gita. Nata the Vasayate Sudhyana Sasanko na Pavaka Yad Gatva Nani Vartanti Tatam Paramama. So you have an address. He said, You come here, you are not going back. It's only one way street for our spiritually developed souls. That's exactly what we get in his heart. That's exactly what we get in Krishna consciousness. And in age of Kali, like it says, Harinam, Harinam Kevam, Kalo Nasti, Eva Nasti, Eva Nasti, Eva Gati Rangyatha. So, finally, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, This is just to give you a So, can you go over again? Uh, how soul leaves the body and what happens to the soul and mm -hmm. body. Can you please uh, narrate again uh, when soul leaves the body, what happens and up to 13 days, 12 days, uh, how soul leaves the body that you already explained. Can you repeat that? Yeah. Like basically, as I recall, and it says that the soul doesn't really want to leave the body because it was attached to it for so many years. So first seven days are very crucial, it says. I mean, you know, that's why many times when somebody is there in family, for a week or 12 days, everybody is trying to accompany someone in the family and this, that. Because what is happening, the soul is still around for seven to 12 days until the body, first, until the body is cremated, the soul is around. And after the body is cremated, the body, uh, the soul is now free. So it's moving around, it's moving around to the known places. So till the, till the cremation happens, that's why cremation is very important. Yeah, yeah. Because without cremation, 
he won't move because he's still attached. To the yes, yeah. in a way it is attached. I mean, yeah, yeah. So he doesn't want to leave the body, right? That's, that's he doesn't want to leave the body. So, so after 12 days it goes out of the earth plane and heads toward the astral plane. And it's depends plane. to astral plane. Astral? astral plane is a more defined like it's a... What do you spell? Hmm? What do you spell? Astro. 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 Right? No. Yeah, but we have not gone there yet. Well, after 15 days, when the when the Shraddha ceremony, the first ritual happens, then only soul will go. Till that day, soul will go. Yeah. Because we get the temporary soul. body that time. Right. right? So, so that is how we get the temporary body. Once the cremation happens? Once the cremation happens, soul is still around. Because it doesn't have a body yet. It is still a pretty or what we call... Pritatma, Pritatma. It is hovering around. It's hovering to your one place, it's your morning one place. It's not getting to that place. Yes, yes. So, it, it not really, soul truly has not left. Until cremation is still there. Yeah. What is the next word? Soul is moving around. Does someone come to take the soul to the respective destination or the soul goes on its own to the astro? The Yamadutas come, right? When person is there, it's like a magnetic. Oh. Yeah, yeah, the soul is taken out, but it does not have a gross body, it has a subtle body. Now, subtle body on its own cannot travel anywhere. So, we do Pindadana, and I say Maharaj's lecture has also addressed all this thing. So, I am not going in nitty gritty, nor I have uh, complete details of the Tarpan and Pindadana. I, I think you have also tried to be on Pindadana. Huh? Pindadana, you had discussed the while we were in so, when you do Pindadan, every day when you do Pindadan, one day the head is formed, the other day other organs are formed, and third day is the, the last and least the hands and everything. So, it's like a micro body is formed to carry the subtle body. That's how the subtle body now moves on the 13th day. Yeah, so 13th day it goes. So, when we do Pindakriya, if you have Notice somebody's last ritual. Yeah, what they do, pins. they will do like a three pin. They will right, three pins, pin, and, and then the they will pin. contact to each other, and then they cut. Right, so it's like a father, son, whoever is that, and his father. father and his father, three generations. Then they mix all together. Right, so first three pin, and then they make it one big, big point. Right. So what happens? Like you are now going to Pitru Lok. So that's what the whole process is. So then in that process, we get a temporary body. Which will carry yeah, the soul. Is a temporary well, which will carry the soul to the port of Yamraj, where he, where the decision will be made whether we want to put well, right? so karmic reaction, what karmic reaction. Yeah. So that time you get the karmic reaction. But the, yeah. basically we'll add that. Right? You get the temporary body to go. So that's very important for these thirteen days. Yes. So what so they do? I missed your point. Uh, you mix three pins again. Then. Yeah. Then, like, the, the three pins are bound together. So, uh, what the Pandit would do? He will make a three pin, separate pin, and then they will cut it, and then they rejoin. So they individually they will give like a body. So if you have seen like a last feature, they will make small, small pins, many pins, not with one. So what they will do, they will give an artificial body, it's like basically a certain body, will give a temporary body. It's a eyes is made, the nose is prepared, the head is prepared, hand is prepared, leg is prepared. And then now you are merging it with your father or whoever is that father and the grandfather. So it, you are now moving to your Pitrulu. So from then onwards, the soul will move to Pitrulu. So first 13 days the soul will not go. So normally it will just we would say it's like a 12 feet. So, in 12 feet, in olden days, the 12 feet, the soul will stay there for 12 days. 13 days, when we do an that's why like 
when last day we put like a saja yes saja yes so for the saja yes. so what they will do they will do give all the charities so they will put a cloth they will put a chappal they will put a umbrella Dhoti. so it has a soul to to go to travel because it it has six stars it has six stars yeah so they will water everything so that the soul whenever it travels it will get that cooling effect because it, it has traveled to different very long space as probably you say whatever you donated to brahmana that like will sajja the beast to sajja so these things are reaching to your pitrus and they eventually get all this help and in 16 stops for satkarm is there is no problem because you get water of these land but for those uh, karmis they have a hard time they cannot find water uh, they have to burn themselves in a hot uh, yeah, there are so many narkas of uh, 16 stop over there narkas will not come here narkas will come after 14 days when the when it goes to yamraj then then the judgment will come that okay you are so, going to narka or you going to swarg or you going to tell about so even before that the karmis विष्णु पार्षद like it said once the uh, but in the vishnu lok even the yamraj gives you dadvat pranam because you are headed to the uh, golok or uh, vikunam so he said this soul is so holy soul that uh, he even pays you respect and that's the vishnu part that then takes him it's only yamraj says uh, that he is good that doesn't come to Why they have to go to Yamuna? Yeah, so Garud Puran does say that, but Shrimad Bhagavad Gita over at Garud Puran, she is saying that if you are Panti Wala and Tilak, then you don't go to the Yamuna, right? So that is basically higher status because there are eighteen eighteen Puranas, right? So Shrimad Bhagavatam was the last Purana, which has the ultimate essence. So Garud Puran is basically is not applicable to the devotee. Basically, it's a more philosophical for devotees. But still, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did the last rite. Yeah, but it's very important to the rite. Last rite has to be done. Yeah, in Gaya he did that. That's when coming back he got love of God. Yeah, so it's very important to do it. But see, Prabhu Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is setting the example for all of us. He is not like Ram. Ram, Lord Ram also did for the Shrad. Right. So it is not required for the devotee. But that doesn't mean that we don't do because. we are not so it just to have a standard right to establish a standard that every we all of us follow otherwise you also think okay i am a devotee also but we don't know what type whether we are a devotee or not so that is we do that is very important yeah. yes for all of us. and then whatever they doing when they are alive to uh, yeah so so what happen when there is there is nobody is there suppose a person is alone then he knows that he will not do anything yeah. then they will do like a, whenever alive yeah. they will do all these charities then it's already done so when you get us like a temporary body will automatically get temporary you, get right? paid, you right? don't have to wait for somebody else to do a cremation otherwise you have to stay as a in a preta arma for a long time yeah. unless somebody do the start so no one does that hmm? no one ever does that sure. no one no ah, then it will not happen you have to stay as that Suffering. so that's why there is nothing krishnanity and muslim as long as something he gets Yeah, so in Christianity and Muslim, like right, they also think the same thing. That's why they bury. So bury a when you do bury a, there is no cremation is not happen. So soul will stay there, and that's what they are exactly. That's what they say. That's why in Sunday they go to the graveyard and put flowers, right? Because thinking that their their father or mother, whatever who are passed away, is staying there, and that is correct. It will stay there because 
soul is so attached to the body and no cremation is not done. So soul, soul will stay there only. It will not go anywhere. But, but now, now they, they also but, believe on a pearly gates and you may have heard the story that Krishna does. Yes. St. Peter is pearly gates and yes. they also have a similar thinking pattern. But and, now, it's very important. If they, to stay there. Nothing. Yes, it cannot move. The yes, yes, because it cannot. When it's a burial, so the, the soul never left the body. So let me explain the process. So, so basically, for seven days, when the death happens, when the death happens, for seven days, soul is attached. Soul as soul is attached to the body. Seven days, he is still in the material, material, material plane. Right? Then, when the cremation happens. Body is burned, he is detached, he is free, he doesn't have a cross body anymore. Okay? But as Prabhuji was mentioning, on the thirteenth day ritual, okay, he is he leaves the material plane, goes towards astral, astral plane, and has to get a cross body. And that cross body process to go to the court of Yamra, Prabhuji was explaining. So there is a process. Yeah. And uh, it is scientifically proven that, uh, you know, if, oh, so, if you so see… So, all these people who worry, they always stay here forever? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, what happened? Uh, so, forever, there was like a, a scientist here and did like a one or two analysis, experience, experiments. What happened like one or one person was about to die, so near die experience. You near death Near death experience. You read the book of… Uh, Chaitanya Charanda. Very nice. The incarnation. So, the what is defining incarnation? Yeah, so, what happened? One person was about to die, and he almost, and he, like, he was like a top, he was undergoing a surgery, and then he, he died. Right? So, doctor said, okay, he is dead. And then all of a sudden he came back. And he, the doctor was surprised that how come he came back. And he, he was that lady, he was a lady, and she was narrating exactly what the doctor was discussing. That okay, this is what happened, this is what happened. So, you were already dead. So, what happened? That's what we say. This Atma is so attached to the body. If you not leave the body, it will stay there. So, it will so be like that till the body is cremated, or soul will go with the like a cremation when you are in Kriya. Right? Ram, Ram, Satya, Ram, Ram, Satya. Traveling with that body. Traveling with you. When the body is gone, then it is close that there is no body. And then it will come home. Yes, because once the cremation is done, soul is then such an the soul is that free to move. In our philosophy, soul is such an he is knowledgeable. So, 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 no, it doesn't because you're going through Vishnu parts of per se. Manusha Nam Sahasra Chiku. Manusha Nam Sahasra Yes. 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 No. Yes. See, like our Shastras, so, I mean, especially Vedas describe 4 lakh human forms, right? Out of 8.4 yeah, yeah. million living four and, uh, species, 4 lakh, it's 0.4 million, yeah. So, 4 lakh uh, human, beings, like Gandharvas and these and Devas and Dhanavas and all kinds. So, all these people who are not really getting that kind of. They hover around in this whole of human body also. <coughs> so, Go through Yamura, you go through, I think probably well in the lecture when we're reading through, that you still go through the whole Yamura procedure, but those who are headed back toward Earth, man, eventually they end up in one of the living species. Let's say out of 8.4 million, some go to a lower grade, some still remain human, human form, but in a lower grade. Africa, Eskimo, Sometimes, yeah, like in many times, uh, Maharaj. What is Eskimo? No, there is too much. Eskimo was a very famous story of his. I, I, I you were born in Eskimo. That's why India, Bharat, Mumbai, Tamil Nadu. Right. So, probably two questions for you. 
uh, one uh, one clarification actually. Uh, everybody has to go to Yamaloka, right? So uh, in Guru Maharaj's story, Guru Maharaj was activated and the Kundalakas they came. Vishnu uh, uh, Das came to take him, and Yamaraj came that no, you cannot go. You have to pass through. Him. So uh, in the respect, as you were saying, you do the, you just step on it and just. No, no, he's project for the death person. Death, 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 death. death. He died. He didn't die. Death person. He, 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 he body transformed into the. He went in the same body into the same. No, 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 not the same body. His body was converted into the transformed body. body. And during that process is the death, and that has to be gone through. No, but his body. He Bhagavad said that his body. He he went in the same body. That is our interpretation. That is our interpretation. No, no, Charles. Uh, Krishna Chakra is talking about that. Yeah. Through Maharaj, went to the same body. Yeah. The celestial plane came. Yeah. He stepped over that person. Yeah. Means he got a spiritual. So his body got a spiritual life or? Yeah. So, you see, you see, he was there in this Brahmat Bhagavad Gita. See, otherwise he would have said he left his bones and ashes here, he got a spiritual body. No, 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 it's not like that. It's, a, it's a like uh, when Vaishnavas are there, great, uh, the great souls are there, um, Krishna can do any magic, you know. Correct. Like their body, the same, very same body which we see as bones and ashes, is actually can be converted as a spiritual. Correct. Has but, to be done. But, but that means even the same body. There is not a, there's, there's there's a, not a single body. There is a yeah. It's not the same body, but it's a... Transformation has to go through so, the transformation. So, what Prabhupada, cannot travel through the same so, so what Prabhupada explains, like he gave an example of iron rod. So, iron rod is iron rod, but it puts in the fire. Yeah, exactly. it becomes, similarly, the body gets spiritualized. Right. So, when the body gets spiritualized, you don't have to die. Right, right. right. That that's is what right, Jivan right. Mukta is called. That is what Jivan Mukta, right? Yeah. So, you don't have to die. The body is slowly, slowly gets spiritualized. And what it, that's what happened to Dhruva Maharaj. So he didn't die. Die means kid, body, kidding on this body. But once the soul recognizes that he is not his body, he's beyond the body. He's beyond the body. And he's a And when he boarded the plane, then he's broken. Then my mother. And his mother was coming right behind. Same thing we hear in Bharat Bhagavatam also. Kumar was uh, also transformed into the tri yes. transformation. Yes, that is why the Guru Maharaj story is not a good story. Prabhuji, can you repeat the key? That's why Guru Maharaj's story is in Bhagavatam. Exceptional case. Yeah. And which you guys have to learn. Second question is uh, that Mata Ji was saying Sanyasi is right. So, if a uh, soul is uh, really uh, attached to the body, and even though the sannyasi is a uh, Vaishna and uh, uh, elevated soul, then why are we following this process of attaching the body and like rather burying the body and having that conception of um, pray to that graveyard that the uh, uh, Samadhi is? Why we attach? Why this process is there and still? Samadhi, why Samadhi to be prayed? We can have a picture and still do the same kind of prayers. Why Samadhi? Why that fragmental part of the body has been like uh, in our process as a uh, worshipable thing? No, 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 so, 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 so then, what is 
body spiritualized. Now, now to show, because he's still a jiva, right? He's still a jiva. We all are jiva. So, to show something like, okay, his body disappeared. Along when he, when he left the body, his body also disappeared. To go through the na natural process in, in the material world, right? Now, Sanyasi's body is spiritualized. If they cremate the body, if they create samadhi, it's, it's like, you can say, how do you say that? It is that his remembrance is there, his uh, uh, body is spiritualized and is worshipful. I think that's what Prabhuji, Prabhuji said, uh, it's for our purification. Yeah, so what happens? For our, purification. our purification. That great soul was in that body. So, uh, since that great soul, if we celebrate their appearances and disappearances of the great soul. So that body was used as a means to, uh, in this world. So it is for our purification, the body is preserved, so all the other vegetables who have come, the obeisances, they get purified. And then, uh, does that mold does not stay good? Yeah, yeah. That concept went long ago. So this is basically the material where we have just created ourselves, right? Yeah. Or is it me? Or me? Yeah. Lot of nitty gritty, and one has to really go to Karur, uh, Karur program like we are doing these days with uh, Gopal Jai to go down. Yeah. Yeah. He wants everybody to be with him. Yeah. But we miss you. Oh, this, this actually is a very uh, uh, one of the questions which keeps bothering me for a while, actually, many years. And uh, somehow this topic came up with the Guru Pradhan, Mataji raised it. Uh, I've been like uh, pondering on this thought that uh, Muslims, they bury the body. And uh, Christians, they bury the body. We got the explanation on that. Whatever the thing is, uh, they follow it. And, uh, but we got the most, uh, um, the purest knowledge, the most perfect knowledge. And even then, um, the Sanyasi's bodies are being buried. And uh, praying for that actually. So the, science, the science of soul living for the day, you know, uh, there is a huge discussion from uh, some devotees mm -hmm. as well as who are scientists. Mm -hmm. So if some devotees suicide the picture, what happens to people who do suicide? The current people do suicide is different. Versus the devotee do suicide. There are some devotees who get frustrated. What happened to them? Some of these answers, I had, had similar question while reading it. It wasn't just easy listening, <laughs> seven days and twelve. But this book, Demystifying Reincarnation by Chaitanya Charanjas. Uh, excellent book. If you read through it, he has done more scientific explanation than spiritual. He has attempted very nicely. And he's one of the scholars in his con also. Spiritual yeah. scientist. Is Go to the website. The spiritual scientist. He has all this, he has like a scientific, it's not the, the spiritual, but it's a scientific base. He has all the experiments. It happening in like a many, many cases. And you have noted there are like a couple of uh, scientists who had a psychologist and scientists. They did a research on this. And that's how you publish He has quoted all Western scientists. So, what are you, if we cannot get the material so, answer? So what uh, what happens to what to answer to your question that why we are burying the Guru and why we are teaching the Samadhi, right? So what is the quality of Krishna? He is transcendental, right? And another thing is it is Achintya Veda Veda. Krishna is here, Krishna is there also. Similarly, the difference between the devotee of Krishna, dear devotee of Krishna, and Krishna is non different. So he can acquire the again the Prabhupada's soul that the iron, when you put in the fire, it is, when you put red one, it is not iron, it's fire. Similarly, the devotee and Krishna, 
acquires devotee acquires the quality of Krishna, and he also forget the same thing. So even if he is buried, still he is there. That's why he worship Prabhupada in everywhere. Otherwise, they, somebody say it's a statue. No, the Krishna is it's not statue. Krishna is present similarly. Prabhupada is also present in his uh, murti form. Similarly, Prabhupada is present in in Vindavan too, in his tomb. That's what he acquires the quality of Krishna. Hmm. That's very good. Oh, thank you very much, I think. Thank you very much. Very good. Very nice. Very nice, bro. Very interesting.